All right, guys, we're going to go over the three ways that I usually screw up my PLC programs in the lab. So let's take a look at this program. At a glance, everything uh, seems all right. Um, let's go here and let's verify the project. Looks good. It says verified is completed. No errors are found. That's good. So let's take this guy and let's download it to the PLC. So I want you to look right here as I download it. And I want you to look at the LEDs on the PLC as well. Okay, so we'll download this guy because everything seems cool. But as soon as we go online, oh, look at this. It put me into remote program. Let's put it into to run mode now. Yeah, let's change it into run mode. And as soon as we do that, two things happen. This guy is screaming that we have a fault. And you can see that the LED is screaming at us here on the PLC. Let's just zoom in there so you can see that. So we see that fault light that's just screaming at us right now. So we need to get rid of that. And like what caused that fault to happen? Well, let's go here and let's go to the error. And let's see, it says the expansion IO module one generated an error. Oh, okay. So that's what uh, happens every time you forget to do your IO configuration. Now, beside the PLC, there's an analog card. We're not making use of the analog card, but it is connected. So the PLC wants to know what the heck this actually is. If we don't tell it what that is, then it's going to give us that fault. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to clear that major error. Okay, and we'll close this guy up. Then we'll go offline. No, we don't need to save those changes. And the way to fix that is to do the IO config. We're going to read our IO, read the IO, and there that analog two channel input comes in. So that's why I was saying you might as well save your, uh, your program as a base program once you've done the IO config. And then every time that you come back into the lab and you do a new project, everything's set up for you and you don't have anything screaming at you. Because sometimes it's a week in between doing a project and another project and you totally forget. Sometimes within 15 minutes, you guys forget what I talked about. But definitely within a week, you'll forget about this IO config. All right, so let's uh, download that and make sure that everything is cool now. Okay, again, it's bumping into remote program, so I'm going to put it into run now. Beautiful. I'm going to hit my forward push button. Contactor turns on. Stop. Reverse. Stop. Excellent. Okay, so everything's working fine with that open loop program that we had from before. Uh, the next thing you're going to do this to screw up your program is you're going to put the wrong address in or you're going to put the wrong um, instruction in. So let me show you that now. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to look at is uh, the program here, and there's something messed up in my program. So have a look here and see if you can figure out what I've screwed up in my program. We'll pause the video here so you can take a look. And once you've unpaused it and you've figured out what I've screwed up, uh, let's see if this stop push button comes in. So that stop push button's good. It's coming in on both those rungs. But watch what happens when I hit the forward push button now. The contactor pulls in, but look at those outputs. The outputs are just screaming at us, right? It's going on and off, on and off, on and off. If I'm really quiet, you might be able to hear the PLC. I don't know if you can pick that up with the microphone, but it's going. And in the lab, um, like my contactor there is still staying in. But in the lab, you may hear where the contactor is turning on and turning off and turning on and turning off. When I let go. It's supposed to hold, but it doesn't hold whatsoever. So the reason for that is because uh, I placed my forward holding con holding contact as my electrical interlock in series with my forward contactor. Well, when this guy turns on, then this will no longer be true, so it'll turn off. When it turns off, then it turns back on. And as long as I'm pressing this push button here, then it turns on and off, on and off, on and off, and you get that machine gun effect where the contactor's turning on and off and you'll, you'll basically burn out the contactor by turning it on and off like that. 
or you're going to burn out the relay outputs on the actual PLC. Let's do it one more time in the reverse. We'll see whether I've done the same thing in reverse. And we'll take a look at the, uh, the LEDs. So the output for the reverse is number three. So we'll take a look at this LED here. Let's just zoom in and see what's happening with that output there. So here's the reverse. And you can see that it's turning on and turning off, but it's happening so fast within the program that the LED is staying lit and my contactor below is pulled in. When I let go, it should hold, but it just kicks out. Okay, so the way to fix that, if anybody knows a way to fix this on, on the fly, I have not been able to figure that out. I can edit my symbol, go to the database, edit description, cross-reference, go to the data table, but I can't change the input, sorry, the output or input address on any of those guys. So if you have a way for me to do this on the fly, meaning like while the program is running, I'd appreciate it. I mean, it's safer to go offline and make those changes. Uh, so those changes would be made by opening your output data table, bringing this guy over here. And let's see, let's grab the forward contactor and let's put it in line with the opposing contactor here for the reverse. And our reverse is going to come up here. There we go. So that should work properly. Let's download this guy one more time and make sure that everything's cool. There we go. Okay, everything looks cool. This is true now. This is true. Okay, so let's hit the forward. There we go. Forward contactor turns on. It stays on. We'll interrupt it with a stop. Reverse. Stays on. Interrupt it with the stop. And when any of these guys are running, then the opposing push button does not affect it. So in reverse, the forward does not affect it whatsoever. All right, it looks good. Okay, the next thing that uh, is going to screw up is going to be your wiring. So uh, on this guy, let's see, my reverse contactor is output number three. You can see if I zoom in here just a little bit more, you can see the, the output terminals down here. So I got line one, neutral. I'm being careful not to jam my fingers in there. There's usually a protective covering over here to cover that 120 input. Uh, here we've got output zero output one, output two, and then the next one you would think that would be output three, but you might just be able to make out it's VACDC three. My output three is below on this lower rung here, right? So let me just drop the camera down for two seconds here so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. <coughs> so, um, I've done this before where I've screwed up and I've thought that I'm actually wiring up an output, but I've brought the output to the common. So we have a common here, ACDC 0, ACDC 1, ACDC 2, and then for some reason it jumps up to the top here. So those are all of our commons. We have another common over here, ACDC 4, uh, that we can all tie together if they're all sourcing or all syncing, or you can have separate sourcing or syncing inputs. So if your program isn't working, it's most likely that one of the commons hasn't been jumpered together. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, two different scenarios that are going to happen. Let's grab a screwdriver here. Let's back off this camera here so we have some room to work. And let's back off output number three. So output number three is on the bottom here. And let's see, it looks like it's one, two, three, four, the fifth terminal. One, two, three, four. Five, so that's my fifth terminal there. Need just a little bit more room here. Easy now. Okay, so we'll back this guy off and we'll pull that guy up. So it may be just a loose terminal that happened. So let's try and turn on the, the forward now. Forward is working. If I go and turn off the turn on the reverse, then on my program it's on but my contactor is not pulling in whatsoever. So this shows us the reason why we need to do a closed loop because right now we're just using the output address to provide our holding contact. You can see here that my output number three is illuminated. So there's 24 volts trying to go out from that terminal. 
but obviously it can't make it because we have a loose connection there. But there's nothing in the rear view mirror to say, all right, that contactor never turned in, turned on. Like you'd like to turn it on, you're firing on the output for the PLC, but there's no confirmation from the field in the closed loop to say that it's actually turned on. Okay, so let's reconnect. Um, this is 24 volts, so you'd be surprised at the little spark that you can get off of 24 volts. It would be best if you turned off your PLC, reconnected your wires there. I'm going to simply stop the output from firing on. That way I no longer have 24 volts there. But again, out in the field, it would be best to turn off your PLC before you start screwing around with any of the conductors. Okay, looks good. Let's fire this guy back on. All right, that's good. So sometimes just a loose connection could screw you up. So that's working. Forward is working as well. Okay. The other thing that we said might screw you up would be the common connection. So maybe one of your commons is not making contact. So let's back off the... So I have all my commons jumpered together. So let's back off one of those jumpers there. And then the signal will be sent out to the coil but there's no return there for the coil there. So let's see, again, in the forward, the forward is turning on in the PLC program, but nothing's happening whatsoever out in the field. So again, that number two output is fired on. There's 24 volts going out to the coil, uh, but there's no return there because that guy is either loose or you forgot to put it in there, or you screwed up your connections there, like I said earlier. Okay, let's see if the reverse works. Okay, so reverse is coming in on the PLC program, but again, nothing's working whatsoever because of that loose common connection. Okay, let's stop that from firing on. Otherwise, we'll get a decent spark. And I, get, I mean, if your outputs were 120, you, you definitely don't want to be putting your fingers in here and uh, making connections while the PLC is live. Always best to turn off your PLC while you're doing this. I've at least turned off my outputs here um, while I make this last connection. Okay, make sure that you back off the terminal first uh, to allow room for the, the conductors. A lot of times on all of your relays and your contactors and your PLCs, we've noticed that in the shop you guys are forgetting to, to back away the terminal and then you're cranking down on the, on the terminal there and stripping it. Uh, because there is no conductor there to make contact. All right, let's make sure that everything's working now, guys. Forward. Beautiful. Stop. Reverse. Beautiful. Okay, so the three different ways that I found that uh, myself and others will screw up in the in the shop would be, first, the I.O. configuration is not done, so you get the fault light. Second would be that you put the wrong address in, the wrong instruction in, um, or you just screwed up your program entirely. Uh, and the third would be the wiring. So you forgot to wire up one of your outputs, or you forgot to jumper your commons back to the source. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you on the next video. Hopefully this helps to get you through each of your projects.